What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Monday to you. Welcome back to another week in the market, which really so far isn't all that exciting. Again, the market, we're going into summer. Summer generally tends to be a slower market. That being said, the watch list today isn't all that crazy. We're really just gonna go back over GameStop. We're gonna go back over the market and we'll talk about a couple of the hot stocks today. And when I say hot, they're not even really hot. It's just a main talking point that most people are probably looking at. Um, but I think today is probably gonna be a day where we're gonna have to keep a close eye on scanners because that's probably what's gonna alert us, alert us of moves we haven't already seen or aren't expecting to see in the market. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll go over GameStop. For those of you that watch the channel and watch the watch list on Friday, you'll remember we suggested GameStop bearish and with price targets as low as 155 to 146. Um, or 150 anyways we got all the way down to 153 so we hit our price targets yeah uh, on on friday for that play we're still bearish gamestop overall and we do anticipate gamestop price will continue to go lower so that being said our next price target or let me rephrase that our price target on friday was for the market to fall all the way down to this white trend line so we fell all the way down to the white trend line we expected the market would bounce here. You can see the market's bounce. Now we're expecting when we get through the price point of 157 successfully, when I say successfully, that means momentum continue, or that means momentum is shifting down and wants to continue down. So when that happens, we should see the price of GameStop all the way down to 117 to 120. So for right, and there's also this level, you can see this kind of by the 50 moving average. So pretty much put it this way, when the price gets all the way through 150, we should see about a uh, 30 point decrease to about 120 to 117 or so. So right now, we're basically projecting this, this downtrend we're seeing on GameStop, it's gonna continue swinging until the price action is retesting this previous bottom and that's going to be the regression trend area, which is 115, 116, 120, so on. So overall, staying bearish GameStop. I think that's. I think there's a good chance we see the one 120s uh, even this week. So overall, bearish GameStop. GameStop down. All right. The next thing we'll take a look at here uh, this morning is WHLM. I'm not really crazy about this, but I know people are talking about it because it's the one penny stock today that went all the way up and crashed all the way down. Over the past week or so, maybe even three weeks, we've been seeing a occurrence of stocks that will do this random jump straight up, then they crash and come down, and then they have these random crazy bounces. So. I'm not a big fan of trading them. I normally don't trade them just because it's out of my comfort zone. But that being said, we have been seeing that random kind of occurrence of stocks go up, crash, and then have these really random weird bounces throughout the day. Um, and it's always the stocks that have big range. And when I say big range, you can see yesterday or whatever, last trading day, we were down here fives, you know, sevens. It goes straight up to 13, and then it goes from 13 down to like so far eight. So from the move from 13 to eight, you know, that's a, that's four or five points. So you could usually see, you know, $1, $2 per share moves up in this instance. So anyways, keep an eye on WHLM. I don't have a really big, great analysis for it. Um, so I'm just not even gonna go over that much other than I think you can see resistance at 878 and 950 that causes this market to roll down. Um, so for the time being, we're not really doing a whole lot with WHLM. We were considering being long on it at some point, um, but we'll see. It's like, like I said, there, there's really nothing in the market uh, today that's causing me to be super excited. And it's felt that way for the past, past couple weeks, and it's going to continue to be that way. So uh, other thing we're keeping an eye on that, that's kind of a a so-so is Tesla. Tesla had a gap up today. It got a price target upgrade. I'm not really crazy about listening to price target upgrades. Um, you know, to be completely honest, I think my price targets are more accurate than half the price targets I see other analysts giving. So again, price targets to me are all just all nonchalant, you know, at the end of the day. Um, so for what it's worth, they got a price target upgrade, like a thousand or something like that. And the stock jumped a little bit. 
I don't really see a need to be extremely bearish on Tesla, but I also don't see a need to be extremely bullish on Tesla. Um, so today, if we're gonna get a pop or a, or a long move on Tesla, really, we're probably gonna be looking for, um, let me just redo this, because um, I know there's something here. There was an over under level, right? Okay, yeah, no, it's here. So if we're gonna get a long move on Tesla, really we suggest that at most it's probably up to 704 and it, if it's gonna happen, we gotta get through 680, 689 because 689 is, um, that's the 50, uh, 50 day moving average. So anyways, to put it simply, Tesla, if it's gonna be a long, it's gotta get up and it's gotta go through the price point of 688 to uh, 689 or so. And then it has an at most target on the day of 707, which is really hard to do considering the intraday at most is 700. Um, so again, Tesla's kind of an in the air one today. And then all that I'm really gonna do is just run over the S&P and then the NASDAQ really quickly. So for those of you that follow the channel, um, as we had mentioned, the market was gonna go to an all time high, obviously, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so markets into an all time high, that's good. Um, there isn't big, big resistance on the SPY that would cause it to come down, but the NASDAQ is getting to what could be seen and a lot of times used as bigger resistance. So what's most likely to occur this week would be NASDAQ rejects the all-time high breakout on its first attempt. What I mean is if we look at the NASDAQ, right now this was a previous all-time high okay now we go down into this big dip and then we come all the way back up to the all-time high for the first time since we put the high so again we put in the all-time high we pull back this is the first time this price has made it back to the all-time high first attempt normally it fails and you're gonna see this pull back okay so we're most likely gonna see negative prices throughout the remainder. I would expect probably the remainder of this week going into next week or so, but give it about a week and a half period, maybe two weeks. So take a two week period and we should see bearish movement on the, on the NASDAQ here. Um, and that bearish movement is most likely what's going to kickstart a pullback in the S&P 500. And then the S&P 500 will probably decrease in price back down to its nine day moving average. So pretty much put it this week, you're most likely going to see the NASDAQ hit resistance here around the price of 337.90 to previous all time high, slightly over, slightly under. Um, and then we'll see a pullback. And then when it pulls back, that's when you're going to see the S&P pull back off of this bullish move and retrace a little bit closer to the nine day moving average. So again, the prediction is this week, NASDAQ hits resistance and the resistance on the NASDAQ is what's actually going to kickstart some of the pulling back or emotional selling pressure into the S&P 500. All right, guys, that being said, everybody take care. Have a great rest of your day. Hope you guys learned something new from the watch list and I'll catch everybody on the next video, which is just tomorrow. Have a good one.